Hey everyone, Mr. Macintosh here, and today Apple released the macOS Ventura 13.4 update. This is a huge update that went through three different RC releases before it dropped today. And in this video, we're going to go over all the new features, enterprise changes, security updates, talking a little bit about Open Core Legacy Patcher, the way that we enrolled into macOS betas has changed to match iPhone. That's a big change. You're going to want to know about that. We got a lot to cover. Let's jump in and get started. First, a quick note before we begin the video, I wanted to change up the way that we do update videos a little bit. So I brought in this ViewSonic TD 1655 touchscreen monitor that is compatible with macOS to give a little more of an interactive session while I'm going over the updates. There's a lot of cool new features that I can go with while we're doing the video. Give me a little bit of feedback in the comments what you think about that. Along with the macOS Ventura 13.4 update, Apple also released macOS Monterey 12.6.6, macOS Big Sur 11.7.7, .7, Safari 16.6, is included in Ventura, but is available as a standalone update for Mac OS Monterey and Mac OS Big Sur. There was no Xcode public release, but just an RC release yesterday and no Studio Display firmware update. On the iOS side, we've got 16.5, iPad OS 16.5, and they also released iOS 15.7.6 for iPad and iOS. There was also an update to tvOS 16.5, an AudioOS 16.5 update for HomePod, and finally watchOS 9.5 was released. It was a crazy week for the releases of all of Apple's updates. And I say that because we were expecting all the updates to drop on a standard Monday. And Monday came and went and we instead got RC updates to iOS and two more RC updates for Mac OS. So that's pretty rare that that happens. Apple's only went up to RC release and a release candidate is basically a final version that's almost ready for production. And as long as they don't find any problems with it, they release that with the same version. We got a little note last week on a possible release date when the Pride Band Celebration newsroom message came out. You can see right here that it says that the updates will be available next week and require watchOS 9.5 and 6. 16.5 and that gave us an idea that it was definitely going to be released this week. Finally, here we are Thursday with all the updates. Our demonstration Mac here today is a MacBook Air 2020 M1. So we're going to go into system settings and we're going to check our software update and we should see the 13.4 update show up. Now what's interesting about this is the first update that comes from an RSR update. So if you install that, you had 13.1a or if you didn't install that, you're coming from 13.1. 3.1. So here it is. All we need to do is click on more info if we want to see the information about the update. And we can see the size comes in at 1.59 gigabytes for this M1 at MacBook Air. Let's click install now and agree. And we'll start downloading. What we're going to do is we're going to keep an eye on how long this takes to install. This is coming from the 13.3.1a, as you can see, the extra product version here. And we are already downloading and we will be able to track how long this takes. Remember, if you have automatic updates installed and download updates, this is going to be a process that you don't even see. In the background, you'll download and it'll prepare the update and you'll get a little message box right here to restart and it only takes about five minutes. So we'll see how long that update takes when we have the product version A RSR installed. Okay, we're back up after installing the 13.4 update. So how long did it take to install? Well, we can see here the preparing part took about nine minutes to prepare the update and then the total time to install the update after the reboot, four minutes, and then for a total time of 13 minutes start to finish. And if you can see here, that's a little bit longer than the 13.3.1 update. And for the 13.3 update, that was 18 minutes. Now let's talk about the build version. When we talk about the build version, this usually seems really repetitive, right? Why do we really even care about the build version? Well, if we go in there and check here what the build version is after we installed the update, we can see we're at 22F66. Now that's important because we talked about in the very beginning of the video that there was three different RC releases. So if you installed the beta RC and you were at 13.4, 22F66, 63, for example, I've got the RC release. I'm ready to go. I'm done. Now you can see that there was multiple fixes released for the RC3 release, which is now the public release. So you would have had to go back into software update and install this final update before you are fully up to date. Now let's talk about firmware updates. If you have an Apple Silicon M1 or M2 Mac, your firmware was updated to 8422.121.1. Your bootloader was also updated to the same version. And if you have an Intel with a T2 Mac chip, your bridge OS was updated to 2016.5058. Apple also released full installers for multiple macOS pieces of software today, including Ventura, Monterey, Big Sur, a Ventura 13.4 IPSW to restore your M1 or M2 Mac, and a separate download for Safari and Big Sur. 
Now let's go over what's new in the Mac OS Ventura 13.4 update. First of all, the sports feed in the sidebar in Apple News now gives easy access to stories, scores, standings, and more for the teams and leagues you follow. So let's take a look at that. Now we've got a whole sports section that you can follow. Another change to news is my sports score and schedule cards in Apple News take you directly to the game pages where you can find additional details for specific games. There's also a change here resolves an issue or auto unlock on Apple Watch does not log you in to your Mac. A lot of reports on that. All you would do is bring your Apple Watch to the screen and you can unlock your Mac. That's now fixed. There's also a fix for with a Bluetooth issue where keyboards connect solely to a Mac after restarting. And that's really important too. If you're trying to get into like recovery mode or something like that, or hold down option to change the boot order, you're holding it down and it's not responding fast enough before the Mac boots up, that's fixed. So that's really great. There's no, another fix here where it addresses voiceover issue with navigation to land landmarks and web pages and also there's a fix where screen time settings may not reset and sync across all devices. Now the next big change in the 13.4 update revolves around the way that we now enroll into Apple software update beta programs. This is now going to follow for Mac OS the same way that it does for iOS. So on iOS, you might've been um, aware of that the change that was made where you had to be signed into your phone with the Apple ID associated with the beta program that you're on. What we used to do is just use the binary seed util. And what that would do is that we can enroll into the beta program really quickly quickly and simple so we could start working on testing the beta. But now Apple has changed that. So what we have to do now is sign into our Apple ID that's associated with the beta program that we're on. So we have the public beta, which is open to all beta testers if you sign up. And there's the developer beta that's for developer paid accounts only. And then there's also an Apple seed beta for enterprise and education customers. That's how that will be set up. And for the Apple seed, you'll have to have a managed Apple account that is also signed up for Apple. Apple seed access. So what does that look like in the beta section? And I got a screenshot so you can see what this looks like. The software update pane will now have a new section called beta updates. So we'll go into this. So we can take a look under general and then software updates. And if we were signed up for the beta, this is what we would see under the automatic updates. It would say beta updates off and then the beta update that you are associated with when you're signed into your Apple ID and system preferences. This example, I signed in with one that is just a part of the public beta and you will be able to click that and automatically start seeing all of the beta updates for the public beta. So it's definitely a, a situation that you're gonna be aware of if you test beta software updates. Now let's talk about the security fixes in the 13.4 update. There's 48 different security update patch vulnerabilities in this update. And there was one I really wanted to touch on. So we'll go to the security update page here and we can click on the Mac OS 13.4 update to see all of the security fixes in this release. And I wanna really highlight one here near the bottom that's really important that I called out that was a issue for me and a lot of others that Apple did not release any information on what was contained in that RSR update. The issue was first addressed in the rapid security response update for Mac OS 13.3.1a. So that's really important because now we know what was fixed in that RSR update that was released just a couple of weeks ago. And you can see here, there was a big issue that processing web content may disclose sensitive information. Apple is aware of a report that this issue may have been actively exploited. And that's important. Like I've mentioned in the past videos, that means that this vulnerability is already being used by attackers out on the web. So that was a really important update that was recovered here. There's definitely a lot of different security updates here. I'd recommend installing it to keep your Mac secure. Not all of these fixes got to the Monterey and Big Sur release updates that just came out. So you want to be definitely aware of that. Now, before we continue, I wanted to address a question about the RSR, the rapid security updates for Mac OS. One of the questions was, is that if I did not install the rapid security response 13.3.1a update, are those fixes included in the 13.4 update? And the answer is yes. I'll give you an example. If you did skip that, you're like, well, wait a minute, 
I can't install it because it doesn't show up anymore. As soon as the latest version of the new version of Mac OS Ventura is released, like 13.4, the rapid security update is pulled from the catalog and only made available to the latest update. So all the fixes that were in 13.3.1a are now rolled into 13.4 so you can get all those security updates. And that's important for even the Open Core Legacy Patcher Macs that are not compatible yet with RSR updates and you still wanted to get those fixes. So now you can install 13.4 and get those fixes installed on your Mac. Now let's talk about enterprise changes in the 13.4 update. There's definitely a couple here that might affect you for education and enterprise. We have definitely the number one that we just talked about, the software update changes for the beta program. And we've got one for Safari now sets network traffic based on WebRTC priority property. We've also got one here for files no longer fail to open after you move or rename them on a network share. We also have one that says resolved an issue where HDMI output on some conference room hardware shows no video. And finally, login with Active Directory mobile accounts no longer becomes unresponsive after a file vault unlock when the network is offline. And I think that's interesting real quick here. And we see seed util die where it can't be used anymore. But we have something that as Mac admins, we've been trying to get away from the longest time. And that is Active Directory mobile accounts, but Apple is still keeping it alive for people who still use it. Let's go over the Geekbench 6 benchmark scores. On 13.3.1, we had a 2364 single core and an 8618 multi core. And after installing the 13.4 update, we got a 2373 and an 8620 on 13.4, which is really close and exactly what we're looking for. Okay, now it's time to go out with the new and in with the old. Let's talk about Open Core Legacy Patcher for your unsupported Mac with 13.4 Ventura update. First of all, if we look over here, we have not had an update to Open Core Legacy Patcher. We're still at 0.6.5 is the latest release. There has been no reported issues for this release except for a Wi-Fi issue that we covered in the previous update. There was an issue right here that talks about that there was some crashing once you updated to 13.4 if you had certain Wi-Fi cards, the BCM94322 and the BCM94324. So if you had one of these older Wi-Fi cards, make sure you update to 0.6.5 before you make the jump to 13.4. Our demonstration Mac that we're testing on today to show the update is a mid-2015 15-inch MacBook Pro. As you can see here, we're running 13.4 and the latest version of Open Core Legacy Patcher, 0.6.5, and everything seems to be running very well. Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, speaker, all those pieces are working very well. If there's any updates to that, I'll let you know, and we'll catch you in the next video. Thanks.